Hey everyone, it's Brooke, and I've had so many people share today's technique with me that I decided that a video was way overdue. People have been tagging me in these videos or sending them directly to me, and so the technique today is a string pull painting. So I don't really know a lot about how to do this, so I found some string, some basically like thread for sewing, and I'm dipping it into my homemade alcohol ink. I made these by soaking the insides from a Sharpie chisel tip in rubbing alcohol. This is a purple ink that I made. Now it was really, really hard to get it into the bottle, so instead I decided to spritz the thread in a cup. Now I used some pretty inexpensive spray bottles for my alcohol inks, so as you can see from the bottle, the paint gets everywhere, and as you can see in a minute, it gets all over my workspace. And it doesn't really cover the string as well as I'd like, but I worked at it for a little while and I got some pretty good saturation. I use the end of a paintbrush to kind of move the string around in the alcohol ink and just tried to straighten it out so that I could get full saturation. So the paper I'm using for this is a piece of watercolor paper folded in half and I thought it would help maybe help the ink to spread better but I almost wonder if it soaked up too much of the ink instead of letting it move across the page. So I think that would be something interesting to try for next time is maybe try some different types of paper. The funniest thing about this technique for me is the sound of the string being pulled out from the paper. It makes kind of a squeaking sound. Now as you can see, the technique almost worked. You can see where the ghosting of the, the ink would have made a really cool pattern. It almost would have looked like a flower or something like that if the ink had maybe shown up better. So instead I decided to try some golden indigo paint and this is more of a fluid paint. I think this is more made for like an airbrush setup or something like that and it definitely seemed to soak in better in the string and I love this color it's such a such a deep beautiful blue so again I just needed to move the string around to try to get it completely saturated in color and I think there were a couple drops of water in my tray from rinsing it out so that helped a little bit more with the fluidity So I'm just laying it down as I've seen people do, just kind of randomly but with a couple of spirals. And again, pulling it out from between the paper. So as you can see, this technique worked a little bit better. There's more paint coming through, you can see a little bit more of kind of the flower shape or just the spiral shapes coming down but I wasn't super happy with it so I decided to try the same thing again on the same piece of paper just to see if maybe I was um, pulling it too fast or holding the paper incorrectly or something like that. Now 
Now I've seen a lot of people do this technique and to me it looks like they're using very fine string or thread. Um, in the past I tried this technique once before using yarn and that really did not work at all. So I'd be interested to hear if any of you have tried this technique and what types of materials you've used and did it work for you. So I'm pulling out the string one more time just to see if the technique can get any better. And as you can see, it's pretty similar to the second one that I did. Um, it's got a lot cooler of a shape than the purple, but I still wasn't super happy with it because I've seen some really cool results from other people. So what I decided to do next is I decided to try it in my art journal just to see if maybe the act of closing an entire book on it would be the difference or if it would help to have a slightly different kind of paper. Now in my art journal I usually like to prep my pages with gesso so here I'm pouring gesso out of a glue container. I just like to put it into the glue container so it's easier to work with because it comes in a really big bottle. but I'm actually using Liquitex brand gesso and I really like it because it can be it can create like a really cool smooth texture on the back of the page and then if you just paint right over it using the credit card method then you get some really nice texture um, coming through the paint and it feels really nice when you touch it so um, I really like using that one and so here I'm just drying it heat drying it um, with my embossing heat gun and that just helps you go quicker and I sometimes feel like it's less sticky after I do that um, probably because it helps dry it out a lot faster I figured I should definitely prep my pages for this so that the ink wouldn't go through as many pages So now I'm just throwing some scrap paper behind the pages so that it doesn't accidentally go over the edges onto my already finished pages or onto the ones going forward in the book that I want to work on. And I basically do the same thing with the blue because I thought the blue worked a little bit better than the purple um, alcohol ink. And I'm using the same string so it already had a little bit of color on it but it was mostly dry I think And here comes the funny part. I actually held on to my book so hard that the string broke off. So I had to go fishing for a new end of the string, which made the bottom end of the painting a little bit less cool than it would have been. But I just had to laugh because I probably was pulling too hard on it and push, putting too much pressure on top of it. So it just kind of snapped off. So I decided instead of closing the book all the way, I would hold it down like I had with the other pieces. It seemed to pull out a lot easier from between this paper than it did between the watercolor paper and I don't know if that's because I adjusted my um, hold on it or if it was just because of the texture of the paper, I'm not certain. With the gesso on it, it definitely has more of a smooth texture. So as you can see, it looks cool, but it's not exactly the way that I've seen some of the other videos. So I'm definitely going to keep testing and try to see what I can bring of it. and. Um, I would love to hear anyone's input if you've done this at home. What type of paper do you use? Do you use string or yarn or um, embroidery floss? I guess I have some of that. I could try that. 
Um, and how much pressure do you put? Is it just a little bit? Is it a lot? And what types of inks do you use? That'd be awesome. And I will definitely try this again because there's some really cool things that can be done with this and I like the effect I'm getting. I just think it could be a little bit better. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'd love to hear from you. Please like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see some more videos from me in the future. Have a great day.